National Fishermen and Pacific Marine Expo are proud supporters of the Galley Stories podcast, as we make similar efforts to highlight the people and topics that define commercial fishing. You can see what that looks like in print and online all year long, as well as every November in Seattle when this community comes together at PME. Check out nationalfisherman.com and pacificmarineexpo.com to learn more. Hello and welcome to Galley Stories, stories of the Bering Sea and beyond, hosted by Mark Kaler. My name is Penka Jane, podcast deckhand and longtime listener. We would thank you to subscribe to the podcast and leave us a review. Here's today's catch. Hello guys, welcome to another installment of Galley Stories, stories of the Bering Sea and beyond. I'm your host, Mark Kaler. Today we have Captain Chad Lowenberg of the Arctic Lady and also... That's his big vessel. And then also he has a Bristol Bay boat that he fishes salmon on called the Calm Sea. Uh, Chad, how are you today? Pretty good, pretty good. All right, let's just dive right into it. Where were you born and, and what got you into commercial fishing? So I was born in Kodiak, Alaska and um, get born into the industry. Uh, my father was, was a fisherman and I was born I was in Kodiak there, like I said, and I was born into fishing. What year were you born? Uh, 1976. Just so we all get an idea of when... And what was the what was the age that you got you out on the you know your dad took you out on the first? Oh, we were we were out on the on the boat uh, shoot early. Five years old, I can remember playing with Play-Doh on the dash. So uh, <laughs> you know we roll up a ball of Play-Doh and let it go as the boat rolled, and then roll all the way across the dash, and then we would try to catch it coming back. So nice. we, we were young, five, five, six, seven, eight. You know. When when did you start working on deck, and how did your fishing career yeah, progress? So we. <clears throat> I started working on deck when I was about uh, oh, 12 years old, I'd say. We, we went tendering in the summertime. We'd get out of school, and, and we were you know, we were required to go go tendering and work for the summer. And, and uh, we started with that, 12, 13, 14, you know, all through high school. And then, um, you know, when I was um, like 17 years old is when I, I started running my first boat. Which boat was that? So I ran a boat uh, in Bristol Bay. It was a Bristol Bay boat. Um, it was a, a little Rossin up there, and uh, didn't didn't really know what I was doing, but I I uh, threw the nets on and let them go and figured it out. <laughs> so no prior experience in the bay. I worked on deck in the bay prior to. You yeah, did. I was a crewman uh, in the bay for three or four years prior to that. Okay, so you did have some experience. I did have experience, you know, picking fish and, and working with the nets and stuff. Never. Uh, any experience with with running a boat and uh, boy, what a challenge! You take a 17 year old kid and you throw him out in the middle of the bay, uh, middle of Bristol Bay with, with, with hundreds of boats and, and currents and, and nets everywhere and what a mess! Well, let's get more into that experience because <laughs> that, you know we haven't had a lot of guys 17 years old out running a boat. How old was your crew? What kind of what, you know, yeah, what were so you dealing I, with? I had my brother with me, and I had, which he was 18, I believe, at the time, um, and I had another guy that was about 19. So we were we were a three man crew, uh, all young, all you know, full of ambition, trying to get her done, and, and not knowing a whole lot of what was going on, and and uh, we, we ended up making a season out of it actually, and I, I think I caught 65,000 pounds that season, first first season ever running. 65,000 pounds and, uh, and we made it work so. um, and then I continued to fish the bay you know ever since then. So. How long did you have the Rossin? Uh, I just had it one year I, I ran it for another guy um, who uh, had a medical uh, transfer that he was unable to go it was actually the guy I crewed for so I'd been on the boat for a couple years and, and, uh, and crewed for him and then he had a medical issue and I I took it over for one summer, um, and then the next summer I went back on deck, and, and then it worked into buying a boat, and progressing, and getting to where we are today. When did you buy the boat? When did I buy the boat? I bought the boat. Shoot, I don't remember, Mark. Long time. Uh, <laughs> I just owned the damn thing. I don't know. What it is. <laughs> I bought a Marco. I, I bought a Marco years ago, and and then uh, ended up selling that and buying a new boat, another boat, like four, four or five years ago. So. Okay, and then uh, you've also got, obviously, Bering Sea experience. Bering Sea, yep. Let's talk about how that started and, and how that progressed. Yeah, so that started, um, obviously, um, Arctic Lady, Boats Arctic Lady. Uh, my dad uh, had it built in 1979. 
Uh, it's been in the family. Um, you know, he obviously retired. Um, I, I worked on it growing up as a kid, um, and it just progressed into uh, running it. It progressed into, um, you know, my everyday you everyday deal. Here, doing your phone is probably better. Okay. Okay. And what were some of the good experiences you had I mean, in both? Because I, it's not often you get a dual guy that's hopping off one boat and the other back and forth and back and forth so <clears throat> you know Bristol Bay I guess we'll start with that um, since we talked about it first Bristol Bay is it's an amazing place with the I mean it's just it's 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 very very fast-paced it's very um, uh, competitive uh, it's still one of the fisheries where you know it, it's, it's not an IFQ program so there's you know, it's, it's a race for fish, and, and it's what you can catch on the quota that's given and, and the amount of time you're given. So it's it's very fast, it's very fun, it's very um, quick, and uh, the amount of fish that rolls through Bristol Bay is just amazing. And to be able to, uh, to, to be a part of that and catch that is probably, you know, it's just it's just amazing what, what happens the amount of fish and the amount of time you have the amount to do of it. fish and the amount of time yes yeah. exactly it's uh it's amazing how much fish you can catch in the amount of time you, you do yeah yeah so okay what about what about on the Bering seaside Bering seaside you know i i just enjoy i just enjoy catching crab and enjoy um i just enjoy you know putting pots in the water and pot fishing and, and Cod fishing with pots and, and catching crab, like I said, it's to, to pick one specific reason or moment or time. It's tough for me to do. I just enjoy being out there. Um, you know, you never know what each day is going to bring. You never know what you're going to get. Um, you know, you just deal with it and, and keep going. And, and every day is a new day, and you keep moving forward. So. How about your best day on the water? Best day on the water. Huh. Commercial or otherwise, best day on the water. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Mark. Uh, there's been so many. I mean, how do you pick one? Uh, best day on the water. I don't know. Um, I guess it'd have to be uh, know, catching blue marlin down at Costa Rica or something. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, what about uh, what about some bad experiences you've had in the water? Scary, bad scary moments. Yeah, we've uh, we've had a few bad experiences, you know. Fires in the engine room, uh, pretty scary. You know, you don't know what's gonna happen. Um, icing up, you know, in the winter time, you get get some ice on, and it gets kind of sketchy. And you know, those experiences are it's all it's all about knowing when to quit and stop and, and take care of it, obviously. But there's times when you you get a little bit more on than you want to have on, and and you have to stop and beat it off and so those are probably the worst, the worst times. Do you, do you have one specific scariest moment that you can recall? Well, I don't know. Um, I'll think about that for a second, more. Okay. <laughs> I mean, there's scary moments all the time, but... Uh, um, haven't really had any situations where, where I've had... Dire fear? Dire fear where I've had to call Coast Guard or anything like that. I mean, we've always managed and been able to get out of a situation that we've got ourselves into or that, you know, we've had minor fires in the engine room, uh, pumps, you know, catching on fire or doing something when you when you smell smoke and you're up driving. And I like how you said um, we've had situations that we've managed. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, so it's typically always manageable. You know, we, we do a lot of training. We do a lot of drills we do a lot of uh, safety stuff so that if we do have a situation um, we're prepared and we know what to do and we can we can you know nip it in the butt real quick so. okay um, what what is fish fishing given to you fishing has given me a you know a lifestyle a way of life it's, it's uh, it, 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 I enjoy it um, it's paid the bills it's, it's given me a, you know, a chance to continue on you know second generation um, I have a son that's very very into it interested in it so he'll, maybe he'll be third generation but it's, it's carried through the tradition on for, for my family and, and, and uh, my father's family um, so 
How, how old is your son now? My son's uh, 13. So. so he should already be working on deck. He is he working was... <laughs> on deck. He is on deck. He goes to Bristol Bay with me every year. I've been bringing him up there since he's uh, eight and a half. So. so you already have the third generation. I already have him on deck, and he loves it. And he, uh, We call it Big Boy Summer Camp, but uh, he... Uh, he likes it a lot. What kind of shares he getting? Well, you know, that's to be determined. You know? <laughs> Depends on what he wants yeah. at the end of the season. A bicycle or a <laughs> video? A motorcycle or yeah. a four-wheeler, you know, it depends. You yeah, know? yeah. You gotta uh, tame him down once in a while. Tell him, why don't you catch that much now? Come on. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> what, what about uh, what fishing is taking from you? Taking from, taking from me? Boy, you know, fishing takes a lot from, from people. I, I guess the, the main thing it takes from people is, is your family. You're gone, you know. Gone. You're, you're not home. You're not there to to uh, to enjoy. You know your family being raised, and, and you gotta you gotta leave all the time and come back and in and in and out and in and out. And uh, so the, the biggest thing it's taken from me is time with my family and seeing my kids uh, be raised and, and grow up. And you know when we're home, we're home. Yeah. Um, and that's good. But when we're gone, we're gone and we're far away. Luckily, you know, nowadays we have internet and things on the boat to where we can somewhat keep in touch, but it wasn't too long ago to where we didn't have that, and it was, you know, you'd go days without talking to your family, and it's not, uh, it's not something that uh, I, I think fun. The, I think the newer internet, Starlink, obviously, is one of the big ones, but it's a game changer for not only for folks out on boats, but remote Alaska in general. Absolutely, Starlink is... Uh, is amazing. I've had it on the boat. I've had it on the boats now. I have it on both boats. Uh, I've had them on there for a year and a half since they first came out. And it's absolutely a game changer. Um, it's like sitting in your living room. And, you you know, FaceTime your family. And FaceTime my family. Shoot, I even I even find myself watching a football game running gear. Right. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, it, it is crazy. So, um, is there anything else you'd like to share with us? I mean, it's been short and brief, but man, good, good speaking. But anything you'd like to share? Boy, Any advice? Know. Advice? Sure. There's a lot. There's a lot of young guys out there watching TV, thinking they want to you know, go fishing. Boy, I don't know what to tell them. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just, it's just, I don't, not really. I don't have. I don't have much advice. Though. Okay. Any final words? Just thank my family for, you know, letting me do do my job and let me, you know, do what I want to do and, and be away and, and, you know, it's tough on them and that's probably the, the toughest thing and, and just thanks to my wife and kids for putting up with me being gone and supporting them in that way. Awesome. All right, Chad, thanks for taking the time to come down and talk to us today. And All right, Mark. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, bye. Thanks for listening to Galley Stories. We hope you like what the net brought in. Please leave us a review on iTunes. Whether you like it or not, we're not fishing for compliments. Look us up on Facebook and Twitter, too, and reach out to us at galleystories at gmail.com.